I wanted to do a uh, how-to video on one way that I make a knife uh, from start to finish um, and actually video it rather than do still pictures. For this one, when I want repeatable results, I always trace out a knife. This is just a piece of uh, paper. Um, but I trace out what I want. If I, if I don't care about repeatable results, I just kind of grind it until it looks like I want. Um, but after I get it on a piece of paper, then I transfer that over to some heavier material. This is cardboard with some tape on it just so it'll hold up. And then I trace that outline. I'm using um, what's left of a 54 inch sawmill saw blade. And then I use a piece of soapstone to trace the outline onto the saw blade. Um, the equipment I'm going to be using to cut the saw blades, just a four inch angle grinder. If you've got a big metal cutting bandsaw, that's a bonus. Face shield and some gloves. So let me get started on cutting that. The next step is to, after you get the steel cut out, you know, remark it, make sure you know where your lines are that you want to shape it, and uh, then grind it. I'm using a Wilton uh, square wheel grinder, and it's got a 50 grit belt on it. Um, I don't use new belts when I do profiling because it wears them out pretty fast. <coughs> so I've got the square wheel or the, the contact wheel here, a uh, 50 grit belt on it and then a tool rest here and let's see how profiling works. I've got the basic uh, profiling done. That's going to be the shape of the knife. It'll be refined a little bit as we go. And now I want to knock off the big chunks of rust on it. So let's do that.
All right, big chunks are off. All right, the next step in the process is to drill the holes. I'm using a carbide bit and a cheap little drill press, and we'll see how that goes. The next step in the process that I use is to heat treat the uh, steel. Uh, I do that before I do any of the grinding. And the reason I do that, uh, a lot of people like to grind it first because it does save on belts. But the thinner you make the steel, the more chance you have of it warping. Just the way I was taught. Uh, I've done it both ways. I've never had a problem, but this is the way I do it. So I've got four blades in there, actually, because if I'm going to turn on the oven and take the time to do that, I may as well uh, heat treat a couple. Now I'm going to show you the program that I'm using. And it's going to heat up to 1525 degrees. And I've got a 30 minute hold on it. And we've got it turned on now. Uh, I soak the steel for about 10 minutes. This, this oven, this particular oven, heats up rather slowly so it's probably not necessary to do much of a soak time on it, um, but it's not going to hurt anything, so I do. Uh, the first step is to harden them, so I'm going to heat them up to 1525 and then quench them. I use motor oil. Uh, I'm probably going to change that out to something like canola oil or peanut oil. It's less mess in the workshop. Uh, and then after that, I temper it, and I'll explain those cycles as I get to it. I'll be back uh, when we get up to temperature. All right, we're at 1525. We've been there for about 10 minutes or so. Time to remove the blades from the oven and quench them. I'm using motor oil. I think it's important to have your, your bath, your quench bath, as close to your heat source as you can. You don't want the knives to cool down because then you won't get the heat treatment that you expect with the temperatures that you use. So I've got it fairly close. Obviously, you've got to be very careful something flammable next to the oven. <laughs> 